Uh, so, Kishore Mehbubani, since you're in Taiwan, I want to end over there uh, because one of the things that happen in autocratic, uh, autocratic dictatorial countries when there is an economic crisis is the tendency to resort to nationalism. And I'm reading a lot of commentary from American generals, admirals, uh, increasing the probability of a Chinese attack in some form on Taiwan or trying to coerce Taiwan uh, and bringing the timelines ahead. It was said to happen sometime, say, 2027, post now. It's being said the window could be narrowing because of economic distress and because the kind of military capabilities that China has been able to build sitting in Taiwan. What's your reading on this? Uh, two, two quick points. First, I, I want to quickly agree with Samir Saran when he emphasized, he got to talk about one earth, one family, one future. And I agree with him about the three important meetings. But there's actually another important meeting taking place in November, hosted by the uh, United States of America, which is the APEC Forum in yeah. November. And the Secretary of State, John Kerry, uh, hopes that that will be the summit meeting that will bring together the United States and China on climate change. And if it does, then frankly, in terms of delivering one earth, uh, one family, one future. And I hope that India uh, will join APEC too uh, very soon. Now, on your question on Taiwan, I had a very interesting dinner in Taiwan. I was sitting next to uh, a former vice president. I want to emphasize she's a DPP vice president, not, not KMT. As you know, the KMT is the one that is uh, aligned towards working with China, and the DPP wants to be more independent uh, of China. And, she, and, and it's interesting that she, what she was saying is that one way uh, for China and Taiwan to come together is not to talk about one China, but one Chinese. And this is the DPP uh, proposal. So you see, if you can have interesting proposals like that, the reason I mention it is that there are ways and means of diffusing many of the serious geopolitical tensions uh, we face in the world. And if you ask me to make a simple bet as to whether or not there'll be a war over Taiwan uh, over the next 10 years, I predict that there'll be no war. Because I think both, all the sides involved, United States, China, Taiwan, and others, understand that the stakes in Taiwan are very, very high and that everyone loses uh, if there's a war uh, in Taiwan. Okay. And, and since Your you, reading since is you... that there will be no war, which is quite yeah. contrary to what we're picking up from uh, American strategic circles, from their generals and admirals. Uh, Ian Bremer is beginning to pour now. So with your risk hat on, Kishore Mehbubani says 10 years, no war, probability is very low, everyone loses. But that was said about Russia's uh, chances of attacking Ukraine as well before the attack did happen. And the Americans were right on that occasion. What's your reading now, Ian Bremer? Uh, sadly, if there's likelihood of war in the nearer term, um, it would be between uh, once again uh, the Americans slash NATO and Russia. There is a proxy war militarily and technologically being fought right now in Ukraine with no end in sight. That is still the danger that needs to be managed and contained to the greatest degree on a daily basis. But uh, look, I agree. I, I don't with Kishor. I don't think that there's any intention of the Chinese to go to war. So not not with the U.S. Not over Taiwan. I think the Americans feel the same way. But the, the relationship is poor. Uh, the level of trust is non-existent, and there's not a lot of engagement. That engagement is improving, uh, but it comes after almost three years of virtually none with the pandemic. And so, as we all know. Um, you know, sometimes you don't want war, but sometimes war wants you. Uh, I, I think that's Tolstoy. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's certainly true that these are two governments that are capable of making mistakes, that are capable of making misjudgments, and that are capable of thinking the worst about the other. The Americans and Chinese both capable. So we need to still be vigilant. We can't be complacent. And if we end up not having war in the next 10 years, it's in part because smart people, uh, thoughtful people, hopefully including the three of us, the four of us talking today, um, are, are, are working hard to help ensure that that remains the case.